person and chat with them over a delicious dish. Today is a very special episode because I am chatting with a musician, he is a singer, a guitarist, and he is the lead singer and lead guitarist of the Corned Beef and Curry Band, and he just so happens to be my dad. Welcome, John McCann! <laughs> Thank you for coming, Dad! So nice to be here with you. I've, it seems like I've known you my whole life. You know, uh, right? We just have this connection. I don't know. It's crazy. <laughs> now, Dad, we're going to be talking about your career as a musician, how you got into the biz, what you're up to now. But before we do that, let's talk about this dish we're about to eat, because it's special to the both of us. This is tuna fish on toast. And it goes back to when I was a little boy in Lackawanna, New York. Uh, my mom used to make it. It's very simple. But delicious. Well, not everybody likes it, but Carly and I do. And that's what counts. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's really just toast with butter and tuna fish, and you put milk in and, and cream it up with some starch. Perfect. Yes. And, and that's all it takes, and it's butter, butter on the toast, and it's it's just delicious. It's creamy, delicious, and reminds me of home. So thank you for making it today. Mm -hmm. Cheese. <laughs> It's like you remember. Mmm. Creamy, delicious. Very simple and economic. Mmm. So, Dad, can you tell me who were your first musical inspirations? When did you know that music was going to be a big part of your life? The Beatles and the Ed Sullivan show. Ed Sullivan was the big thing for people that are real old like myself. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> but Ed Sullivan had different musical acts on every week. But for the Beatles, he actually had three weeks in a row because they were such a dynamic force. And we were just mesmerized by them, you know. Although we, well, there was all kinds of shows, I mean, all kinds of musicians on his show, the Beatles just took everybody away. Mm, and what was it about them that really just, like, wowed you? Well, they, were, they had original music that was upbeat and slow and beautiful. And uh, they also had this new look with hair coming mm -hmm. in, you know, and they... And, the, and the, the girls screaming in the audience. It was kind of, you know, I like the other guys too. Like, you know, I like Dean Martin and, you know, I thought he had a good job, you know, he, but he was all dressed up in a tuxedo and he always had a drink in his hand and he had girls on both sides. So I said, it's a good job. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> uh, so, so, you know, the, the music and Bing Crosby and those guys from the way, way back. My mom used to like music. I was the baby of the family, but uh, so, I did, by the time they got to music lessons for me, they pooped out at it because nobody else took it. <laughs> nobody else took to it, so. But you did, and here you are now. So you started playing guitar, and you've been singing. So can you tell me about your first gig, your first official gig? What was that like? Well, it's it's hard to say first official gig because the way that I got into it was was what they call open mic nights. Sure. And so that would be you'd have a professional musician that knew what he was doing. And he would have, uh, uh, he would get a list, and the people would all put their names on it that had the guts to try to get up and sing in front of an audience. Mm -hmm. And you were allowed to do three songs. Okay. But I didn't tell any of my friends about it, you know, because right. it was, I, if, if it went bad, they were going to have a lot of fun with me on that. So. Mm -hmm. so I went to this place that I knew they were doing it, and, and I had the nerve to do it. And, and, uh, and it, I wasn't all that great, but I was good enough to get by, and they wanted me to come back. And how did you feel that very first time, stepping up to the mic? Well, stepping up to the mic, I was really, really nervous, but I actually uh, I actually threw up that day. <gasps> Beforehand? I before I, I was so, you know, I, I, I was so nervous because I had committed that I was going to do this. Mm -hmm. So I was a wreck. And the way that it worked out to be, become professional is because every week I would go. And so I did it for probably two months in a row. I was a regular person there. And I was getting more used to it, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a show on television that I wanted to watch, and I didn't go. And I get a call, and the, it's the, the owner of the bar. And he goes, John, where are you tonight? And I said, well, you know, I, I play for free. You know, I, you know, I just, uh, just just figured I'd stay home tonight. He goes, well, there's, there's people here to see you. Oh. And I said, well, what, really? And he goes, yeah. He goes, so you, you, why don't you... Would you please come down? There's, you know, so people here to see. Yeah, he goes, I'll, I'll give you like twenty five dollars in drinks. I said, I'll be right down. Yeah, hey, say no more. <laughs> so that was the first time I ever got paid to play. Wasn't much, but you get paid, you're a pro. That's how it works, <laughs> that's, exactly. That's how it started, yeah, yeah. 
Amazing. And so you got, you know, used to the crowds and you're becoming professional. And so I want to know what your favorite part of performing live is. Actually, I think what I'm best at is just being the person that's talking to everybody. I, I like I like the pattern between the songs. I like to joke around with the people. And, you know, with this COVID thing going on right now, I've, I've noticed that that's kind of the thing that I miss the most is, is uh, just you know, making people laugh. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm an entertainer in more of a sense than singing and playing, more than I even thought. And that's what audiences have been saying too. Of course they miss the music, it's fun, it's awesome, but they miss that connection with the musician, the person that's performing, but they miss it with their friends, you know? All those conversations that come up from listening yeah. to live music and being together and having a drink, you know, we miss that stuff. Yeah, and, and since I did a, lo a really lot of small places and you know, pubs and things like that. So you have that intimacy, you know. Exactly. And, uh, you know, although the, with the band, we did travel and play in big stages and stuff like that, still then after that, you still, everybody wants, you know, you do your autographs and your CDs and stuff like that. And you feel like a big celebrity, it's fun. Oh yeah. And that brings me to my next point, because I wanted to know, you're Pittsburgh based, but you've performed all over. So I was wondering if you had any favorite gigs that stand out to you or any moments where you've been playing somewhere and something crazy happened. Well, sometimes like, like for the uh, St. Patrick's Day Parade week here in Pittsburgh and stuff, you know, the crowds would be all, Delve up, and it's just a you know all day thing, and it's a lot of hard work, and some of the same songs over and over again. But uh, you know that that can be fun to see people get really really worked up. <laughs> yeah. You know, and in the summertime when when we play Putin Bay with the band, winter in July, uh, Christmas in July rather, you know, and mm -hmm. the kind of people that you'd see come in in summertime dressed up in their Santa stuff and play the resorts and stuff, and be in, in Florida. And, you know, with they, we do stuff for all the, you know, the parrot heads. That's a, mm -hmm. parrot heads are like a Jimmy Buffett's type of music. It's actually called trap rock. Oh, you know, it's trap got rock. Its own little genre. So, a lot of people may not be aware of that term, but it's mm -hmm. there's they have their own radio stations and they have their own little celebrities that are working their way up. Oh my gosh! Yeah, so many fun places you played at, and I'm sure so many memories. Can you tell me about recording your CDs? Well, you know, um, I played in bands and stuff in Buffalo, that, and that's where I'm from originally, and uh, and I didn't, although I was in uh, several groups and played as a solo act there, we didn't record stuff. And, you know, back then, it was recording was really, really expensive mm -hmm. and a big, big deal, and going from band to band, that didn't happen. When I moved here to Pittsburgh, even though it still was expensive back then when I did it, People were having tapes and stuff like that. Right. People asked me, "Do you have any tapes?" You know, a lot of yeah, because I started to play more Irish stuff here. Mm -hmm. Although I did start the Irish stuff in Buffalo with uh, my friend Timmy Lally, so I knew a lot when I got here, and it seemed to really go over well for me. And uh, so when I did my first CD, I was didn't know a lot of people here because I was from another town, and I wanted to have somebody to play fiddle. And uh, my friend Bob Energy was the person I finally I never knew him before this. Mm -hmm. I hired him to work on my first uh, CD this day, and that's a song that, uh, that I wrote for your mom, you Beautiful. know, for our wedding day, and so I wanted to record that, and, uh, and then a lot of other Irish stuff, so we would uh, we have stuff that you can use at your live shows, or people can, you can sign the CDs, and you know, people bring your music home. Yeah, they take a little piece of it with them. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna play a little section of This Day, the song my dad was talking about that he wrote for my mom, just in the background now, if you wanna have a bit of a listen. And while we're listening to that, can you talk us through some of these CDs that we have this here? Day. So well, this, this is your first one. Yeah, this is the This Day one. Yeah. This, you know, this, was, uh, this picture was taken in the backyard of our old house. Yeah, uh, down at that storage of that picture. That's Ross and Dad and my good friends. That's my, I still play this guitar, this is, this is my baby there. And Justin Strausick, who played uh, with the St Pittsburgh Steelers, was played banjo on it. And Bob Banerjee, who I was getting to know back then, he, I, he was only supposed to play on a couple of songs. And he wound up playing on every song. Wow. And now, of course, he's a part of the band. Yeah, oh, yeah, he has been for years. Yeah, and he, he would come to a place in, in the South Hills. Uh, get away it wasn't so far from his house and so he got to know me and he would sit in with me and so that's how you know 
he learned so many of my songs by hearing me all the time that he and he's one of these people that can really just play it along with anybody anyhow so after a while people were saying well how much does it cost to you know hire you guys and, you know we weren't really a duo yet but we started getting offers so you know, we started taking yeah what were some of your first pittsburgh gigs like what places That's first right. hired you your mom got me a job at Murphy's Poorhouse in Carnegie, and uh, I was still living in New York, but this is before we got married, and uh, she gave me the number of the place, and, and I called them, I called up, and, and, and the guy said, well, you know, why should I hire you? You know, I don't know you for anything. I go, well, my wife works at the PPG building, and she's going to bring all her friends if I play. He goes, okay, you got a date. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> you know, so, it, you know, and, and, and it worked out well. I've, I've played there ever since. That place has changed hands many times, and they still have music there, but now it's called Riley's Courthouse. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, with COVID right now, they're, they're not completely shut down, but pretty much. Yeah, and speaking of COVID and everything that's going on, can you talk about how you've gotten creative over the last couple of months with more traditional locations shutting down for the meantime? What are some of the things you've done to keep you know your creativity alive not enough but uh, you know I have had a couple little yard things where I played out on our deck you know and had the social distance things with people spread out a few of things like that and the other thing I did is is I did do a music video called I used to love her oh I yeah think you know somebody that was in that <laughs> I think I do I'm not yeah. sure <laughs> so, so that that's on YouTube and, and I had a lot of my friends, you know, and since the people can't get together, I sent them the music and I sent, had them add their parts and then I had my studio man, you know, put it all together. Yeah. And my studio guy, Joe Monroe, he also was a musician, so he played drums on it and he played accordion. And it's a funny, risque little song, but it, <laughs> it, it, you know, people just like it. It's catchy. And I did have you know, everybody, I said, just use your phones and, and just take pictures of yourself doing your little parts and mm -hmm. stuff. And also some little funny things that I threw in there that I have around the house. Yeah, if you haven't seen the video yet, it's linked below. So check it out. There are a lot of interesting um, characters that feature. <laughs> so yeah, you don't want to miss that. So Dad, is there anything that you're looking forward to coming up maybe with your music or with performances? What are your plans? Well, the, the plans are kind of up in the air. You know, the, the only, there's, there's, I have some bookings that are far away, but the biggest one would be the music on the bay. That would still be that. That was like the last really big outdoor concert that we did. That's a big festival in Tampa Bay, Florida. Mm -hmm. and, and we've been enjoying playing there for the last few years. But, um, you know, uh, that was the, just the last time we did that was in March, right when things early March, right when things were starting to get scary. Yeah. And they're hoping, and you know, they, uh, we've signed a contract to play it, but they did put a, you know, the voucher in there that, you know, this, we might have to maybe not do this, but, right. and everybody understands, but at least th there's been many, many, many shows that we've had signed contracts for in Chicago and, you know, in different places that we just, uh, it just we can't do it and nobody can do anything about it and you have to understand right yeah and most people are pretty understanding and but they're itching to get back to that live performance mode but until then where can people listen to your music if they go to uh, John McCann on YouTube I have some of my stuff on YouTube perfect and the I used to lovers been getting the most hits and I do, <laughs> do I do sometimes another thing when you're asking about creativity things I, I was I do sometimes we'll just sit down and record a song and, and on the, on the, like this, mm -hmm. you know, and just play guitar and sing it and just put it on Facebook. And then you also have an Instagram, so I'll link to John McCann's Instagram, Facebook, all of that good stuff down below. Dad, thank you so much for joining me today. Is there anything else you would like the audience to know? This kid is such a talent. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Dad. <laughs> thank you so, so much. Your music has been the soundtrack of my life, so it's been... Such an honor to have you on today. Well, thank you for having me. It's, it's an honor to be your dad. I love you so much. Love you. <laughs> thank you so much for watching, everyone. Check out the links below to find my dad's wonderful music and his amazing videos. And we'll see you next week.